All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're here, day 12, episode 13 of 40 Days of 4VKM. And boy, do we got a lot of 40s going on in the WWE right now. They just announced WWE 2K24. Uh, I told you guys about this a couple days ago. They're going to make some announcements on 122, which is today that they am filming this. And uh, what was the announcement? One of them, at least, it was... 40 years of WrestleMania that's going to be uh, celebrated in the game, right? Watching Monday Night Raw tonight, they just did a clip on Hulk Hogan celebrating 40 years of Hulkamania. So it's a big year. We got WrestleMania 40 coming up in uh, April in Philadelphia. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. But before we get to WrestleMania, we got to talk about the Gridiron Gang Dos. Uh, Gridiron Gang Saves America. We talked about the first episode with that the other day. Uh, you know, so go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And we're going to talk some more about The Rock. I know The Rock is, you know, hit or miss with a lot of people here. But by looking at the feedback, looks like some people are coming around to what I said about The Rock. So I appreciate that. And if you don't buy me or, you know, believe me or whatever, that's cool too. You know, you don't have to. I could be wrong, like I said. This is just my opinions from what I see from watching wrestling and seeing all this other stuff that's kind of led me to this conclusion right here. So let's get into it because this is a big one. So the video starts off. Let me start with the theme song. The theme song, I want to say it was used at a WWE pay-per-view. Uh, it's called uh, Whose Side You Fighting For or something like that. And... Uh, Totally not the name of it, so I'll, I'll circle back and figure that one out. But uh, if you listen to the lyrics, that's kind of what they're talking about. Whose side you fighting for? Dun, 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 dun. This is a war. So I heard that song and I said, wow, that's perfect for The Rock, right? And, and uh, to kind of... So, hey, what side is he on? Is he the good? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Uh, we know he endorsed Spiden. You're going to see that in this video here. But uh, when it all comes down to it, right, we have a clip. We start off with President Barack Obama. And uh, it's Christmas time. And he's at a uh, charity event with his Michelle and uh, the kids. And uh, they are celebrating uh, children, right? And uh, he's got some kids on stage. And he says, uh, these are some great Santa's helpers or something like that, right? And The Rock is there emceeing and hosting the event, right? And there's a clip that caught my attention as I'm watching this, right? I'm just doing research. I had never seen this clip before. But I was like, let me see anything with The Rock and Obama, right? And I find this clip here. Don't forget, The Rock played... The Rock Obama on SNL as well, right? So uh, it's kind of interesting. But Obama's talking, and you kind of have The Rock give him a look, like, you know, and then he kind of looks around like, you know, did anybody see that? And then he, he perks back up, he starts smiling again, right? But take a look at it yourself, uh, you know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Uh, but, you know, he gives him a very interesting look, to say the least, right? Now, as Obama is speaking in this video, I show Obama's Secret Service code name, which is Renegade. And Renegade, uh, you see later on in the video, uh, what does Renegade mean, right? So his Secret Service code name is Renegade. Was that given to him? Did he choose that himself? Who knows, right? Uh, but if you look up the definition of a Renegade, not a really good word for president, right? It's something along the lines of like a deserter, somebody that abandons their country, almost kind of describing like a traitor, right? So look it up. Don't take my word for it. Look up the definition of renegade and you will see it for yourself. So we got The Rock. We got Obama, right? Whose side are you fighting for? I don't know, right? So, you know... Everybody, when uh, Joe Biden was running in 2020, right, they kept bringing up the fact that he spilled the beans on SEAL Team 6, right? And, and people like to point at that and say he's the reason why SEAL Team 6 was taken out 
in retaliation for Osama bin Laden getting busted, right? Now, this is where it gets very interesting with The Rock. You see the Young Turks, right? And they're kind of talking about Dwayne Johnson. Well, he announced that bin Laden has been, uh, was taken out 45 minutes before the media did. There's that damn 45 again, right? So it's true. The Rock tweeted a statement saying, you know, just found out some amazing news. Uh, God bless America, something along the lines. Uh, proud to be an American, very important phrase. Uh, home of the free and the brave, right? Home of the brave, he definitely says, right? Uh, he doesn't directly say uh, Bin Laden was taken out, but he basically says like some stuff's about to break, uh, and he breaks it before any other news outlet 45 minutes before. So that's what that's the rock, what he does, right? This same night, there's a WWE pay-per-view going on, and it is called Extreme Rules, and John Cena wrestled in the main event, and after the show, John Cena gets on the announce tables and with the live mic, and he announces it to the crowd uh, that Osama Bin Laden has been taken out, right? So uh, at this point, this is still way before President Obama comes to the podium and announces it, right? So it's very interesting. You have The Rock announce it before the media, and then you have Cena announcing it before Obama comes out. Um, they both use the same phrase. John Cena uses the phrase, damn proud to be an American. Same phrase that The Rock used as well, right? So it's very, very, very interesting. Now, going back to Joe Biden, right? Uh, from my point of view, this was very interesting to me because, again, nobody was telling this story during 2020, right? Everybody was saying Biden spilled the beans on SEAL Team 6, right? And we know what ended up happening. It, it, the, the, the incident was called Extortion 17, right? And it was the uh, helicopter that was shut down uh, in, I think, Afghanistan. Um, and basically, you know, it, it was retaliation for... Uh, SEAL Team 6 taking out Osama bin Laden, right? And everybody blames Joe Biden for that information getting out, right? Now, the truth of the matter is, Biden did say that, right? He did say the SEALs, right? And that clip is in the video, right? But he said it after The Rock said it. In fact, if my memory serves me correctly, it was either the day after or a week or two, it was very shortly after at a Monday Night Raw in Miami because I was there, right? So I'm here witnessing The Rock come out and talk about Bin Laden being taken out and how proud of an American he is. And he leads the whole arena in a pledge of allegiance. And I was there doing the Pledge of Allegiance with The Rock and 13,000, 15,000, however many screaming WWE fans, right? And it was a very, very patriotic moment at that time, right? So The Rock's leading this, and as The Rock's speaking, he even says, I'm so proud of SEAL Team 6. He says it. He even says SEAL Team 6, right? So, you know, The Rock said it way before Joe Biden did, right? Now, he also says something very interesting, too. He says... We got them, right? And as I was making this video, and after I saw some of the stuff that kind of came out about this uh, from, you know, some of the different influencers and anons out there that were really digging into it, Donald J. Trump was retweeting a lot of this stuff uh, during this time during the election as well. I'm trying to think, you know, who is The Rock talking about when he said, we got them, right? And... You guys remember that video on TikTok that came out a couple years ago? And that video with the guy with the curly curly hair? You guys know who I'm talking about, right? Well, you see the clip in here where Aaron Vaughn is, you know, it's an article. And he's uh, talking to his parents about how Biden sold them out. And, you know, now they're worried for their lives because Biden has basically said who took out bin Laden, right? Now, 
Think about it. That TikTok video. You guys... I'll put a picture of it so you guys know who I'm talking about here, but... You deserve the whole truth. So here's the thing. Find out who I am. And for those of you who know, and you're not saying anything, well, those golden tickets you have are really lined with lead. Because until the whole truth comes out, it's all just lies on both sides. So anyway, TikTok, have some fun with this. Find out who that man is with the silly curl on his forehead. I had forgotten I even had that curl for decades. Strangest thing having your memories wiped out. Well, anyway, take care, TikTok. Godspeed. <laughs> that individual sure looks like Aaron Vaughn, who was on that helicopter and whose life was lost in that operation, right? So what is really going on here? I don't have all the answers. I don't know. All I know is that everybody was mad at Biden. Nobody knew that The Rock said it first, right? But so then we should technically be blaming The Rock, right? But then Aaron Vaughn comes out in this TikTok video. And maybe it's not Aaron Vaughn. Maybe we're just cuckoo, cuckoo, right? Um, and maybe they all perished in that helicopter. RIP, if that's the case, right? But it's very, very interesting. And then when you think about going back to that clip with The Rock, we got him. They announced it before Obama in the media, in the fake news, right? Uh, John Cena did as well. By the time Obama came out, there's already a crowd outside the White House. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. But all I'm going to say is it's very, very interesting to say the least, right? So now fast forward in the video. Uh, we're going to go back to 2001. And in 2001, we had the WCW ECW invasion of the WWF, right? So they were the two, you know, uh, second and third promotions to the WWF. In 2001, WWF ended up buying both of them, first WCW and then ECW. And then they did a storyline where Shane McMahon, Vince's son, owned WCW. His daughter, Stephanie, owned ECW. And then there's that walrus again, Haman. Haman, like, you know, the book of Esther, the 17th book of the Bible, right? Uh, Haman's a big part of that. Not a good guy in on television. Not a good guy in the Bible. Uh, spelt a little differently, but, you know, said the same. So you have the three of them in the ring with The Rock and Vince McMahon. And at this point, The Rock had been gone in Hollywood making movies. Uh, they had written him off on uh, storylines after WrestleMania 17, where he lost to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And uh, so, you know, there's a bidding war for The Rock services, right? WCW and ECW want The Rock. Vince McMahon and the WWF want The Rock, right? He's coming back now. Uh, from Hollywood and from his suspension that Vince put him on. And, you know, they both make their pitch, right? And Shane and Stephanie are making their pitch. And listen to what Shane says, right? He goes, the Alliance is a much more progressive organization than the WWF, right? He's making his appeal to uh, to The Rock. And Vince is like, Rock. Stick with the devil that you know. I mean, stick with what's working, right? I mean, look at all the success we've had together. Like, don't don't turn your back on this now, right? And it's almost like the alliance is representing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And it's almost like Vince McMahon is representing Trump, right? And then The Rock's in the middle. He's going to make his decision, right? So what's The Rock decide? The Rock decides that he's going to rock bottom Vince McMahon. And the whole crowd loses it. Shane, Stephanie, Heyman, they're all excited, jumping up all over the place, right? And, um, you know, it looks like The Rock sold out to the Alliance, uh, the progressive organization, right? So The Rock uh, does that. And, you know, 
the, uh, Heyman's on commentary, actually. He's not in the ring. And uh, Heyman says, remember this moment for the rest of your life. And that's how I felt when I saw The Rock endorse uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, right? It was like burned to me. Like, how could he be doing this, right? How could he be doing this? So uh, you see those clips, right? The Rock chose Shane and Stephanie. And then The Rock chose Kamala and Shane or Kamala and Biden, right? So, uh, Kamala. Let's talk about Kamala a little bit, right? Did you know there was a wrestler, Kamala Harris? His name was actually James Harris, and he was the Ugandan giant, right? Um, he passed away on August 9th, 2020. As soon as that happened, I knew Kamala Harris was going to be Biden's VP pick. Not a doubt in my mind. And sure enough, two days later, Kamala Harris was announced via that stupid little teleconference thing that they did uh, that Kamala is going to be Joe's Veep, right? And, you know, that wrestler's name was James Harris. His wrestling name was Kamala, right? So you have Kamala Harris in wrestling years before all of this, right? So I show you a clip of Vince McMahon and, uh, you know, Kamala, uh, Kamala being introduced into the ring. And we show you the drop that says Project Looking Glass, right? Because I don't even know how else they figure this out, right? Now, I remember somebody asked uh, the 17th letter one time, how do you know the future? And, and they said control, right? So made me think about that a little bit. We talk later about Elias and, you know, we show some stuff about uh, Ingersoll Lockwood that, you know, people think might have something to do with time travel or, travel or, or something like that, right? We know Trump was connected with Tesla, so we touch on that a little bit. But how the hell did they have this all planned out, right? And then Kamala Harris, the wrestler, dies two days before Kamala Harris, the politician, becomes the VP candidate, right? Just blows my mind, right? So uh, you have The Rock making his endorsement to Biden and Harris, right? And they do this corny, cheesy little interview, right? Where Biden and, and Harris are sitting like 10 feet apart from each other. And they're doing like a teleconference with The Rock in his office with his Brand new XFL helmets that he just acquired. Because remember, Gridiron Gang won. He bought it from Vince, right? So, uh, so the new owner of the XFL that just bought it from Vince McMahon is now endorsing Biden and, uh, and Harris, right? So I was a little crushed a little bit. So, but then I had to look into it. I had to look into it and say... Uh, all right, maybe there's something more here, right? So you can find an article about how the Biden campaign was not happy with Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, because he edited the video that he put out, and he put it out through all his official channels, so Twitter, YouTube, whatever the case is, right? And uh, he, he put like a little pre-video that he shot in his backyard before the endorsement video, right? So I went and I studied that a little bit, right? If you watch that video where he's uh, in the tight blue shirt and he's got his man boobies popping out, he says exactly at the 17 second mark. Now I was looking for this. I, first thing I wanted to say was, okay, he put this video in here. Let's see if there's any clues at the 17 second mark, right? Sure enough, you know what word he says right at 17 seconds? He says, friends. So I'm like, oh, interesting. Friends, 17. Is he friends with 17? Is he with them, right? So, you know, just let it marinate for a day or whatnot, right? And I think it's the next day. Uh, one of the U.S. military X accounts or Twitter accounts at the time they post out a military plane and the uh, call sign on the the military plane it says amc the rock like the rock and 
What's AMC? Add it up. AMC in Gematria is 17. Wow. So yesterday, in this video that dropped, The Rock says friends right at 17. And then the military the next day gives you a 17 The Rock. AMC The Rock, right? So what the hell's going on here, right? Now, I know a lot of you guys thought, oh, that plane uh, that said The Rock, that's his flight to Gitmo. Maybe it was, maybe it was, maybe I'm all wrong about this, right? But I don't know. He said friends with 17 and, uh, you know, AMC, The Rock, AMC 17, that's the military there. That's kind of 17, right? Maybe they're just trolling people like me, knowing that I'm going to figure this stuff out, right? Who knows? But at the very least, I'm presenting it to you guys so you guys can make up your own mind. So... We're talking about the Gridiron Gang, and we cannot talk about the Gridiron Gang without talking about Barstool Sports, right? We talked about that the other day, and what are the odds, right? Uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we dropped uh, the uh, Barstool Sports, the Gridiron Gang one on Rumble, right? This The review covering that video, and then what happened today, 122, Barstool Sports made their Rumble debut. They've moved on over, right? So uh, they were tired of the YouTube bull crap, right? Just like the rest of us. And uh, there they are now on Rumble. So it's like a little prelude to Barstool coming to Rumble. So um, I show you the clip of Erica Nardini, who uh, became the CEO of Barstool Sports in 2016. And uh, this was after they got purchased the first time by, I guess, Churning Group. Um, you know, which that's a story for another day, but so you have, uh, Erica Nardini gets announced as the CEO of Barstool. You see a clip of her, um, talking about how she got fired from a couple boards because, uh, she, uh, you know, was now associated with Barstool, right? And if you pay attention closely, it's a little subliminal thing I put in here that, you know, nobody knows unless I explain it to you right now. So here it is, right? Um, but right when she says fired from the boards, right? Uh, that's when the music starts, right? And I kind of picked that specifically because it's a very important part of my story, right? So I tend, I have, I go back, way back with one of the Barstool guys. Um, I'm not going to say who, right? But uh, we go back. You know, I'll even say we were roommates at one point, right? So, um, you know, he had me working with Barstool in 2010. And uh, I was at a rough point of this time, right? This was right before I came down to Florida. I'm still up in Massachusetts. I'm in between jobs. I'm kind of trying to do my own thing. But, you know, uh, I had this gig to help them out with their Stoolapalooza tour. So you, and you see, I put the Stoolapalooza tour in there, right? So I put the Stula Palooza tour in there because I was on that tour and uh, I was on it for, I think, one day or maybe two days. Right. And uh, ultimately, I got fired because I couldn't make a date. I, there was a mix up with a laptop in my car. They borrowed my car. The artist, he left his laptop in there the day that I couldn't make it. I couldn't find the laptop because he put it on the window in the back. Right. So made them late leaving for their show that day and at that point my buddy was like dave doesn't want you around anymore and that was it and boom the only job i ever been fired from barstool sports right uh what are the odds of that so where it gets interesting for me is that on that tour there is a gentleman that was the dj of this tour and his name was dante the don right so uh you know let's just say we don't really stay in touch. In fact, Dante, I don't think I ever interacted with Dante since that tour, when I was on that tour, right? Uh, we, we were not friends on social or anything like that. I just He probably didn't even remember me, right? Because I was just a flash in the pan, right? Um, so I released Gridiron Gang 1. And somehow that got to Dante. And uh, Dante found it interesting enough to write a blog on Barstool about it, right? And he's kind of making fun of me, right? Like it's uh, somewhat passive aggressive, right? But 
uh, for the most part, I got to give him credit because he's the only one in the media um, that was had the balls to touch this thing, right? For VKM. Nobody. It's like one of the most uh, banned phrases on X. I did a test the other day. For whatever reason, if I write for VKM, just boom, it goes into the pit. So, um, so Dante writes a blog on for VKM and about this article, right? Now he had done one on QAnon, uh, a couple weeks beforehand and he was really shitting on Q and whatnot. And, uh, you know, he was getting it in the comments from a lot of Anons that, uh, are Anons, right? So, uh, and somehow this made his way to the desk, right? He shows the text exchange about, uh, how, how it kind of goes down, right? But if you search, you can find the article. It's still up. Uh, it, the title of it was something along the lines of, after watching this bombshell video tying The Rock, Dave Portnoy, Robert Kraft, Tom Brady, and Vince McMahon to the QAnon thing, I'm all in on QAnon, right? So it's it's pretty funny in that regard. So... Uh, so Dante writes the blog, right? And then I I find out, and I'm like, oh, crap, dude, I'm on Barstool, right? So I I find him on Twitter or something, or email or something, and I send him a message like, hey, dude, like, you're never going to believe this, but w I was actually on that tour with you uh, 10 years ago, because that would have been actually 10 years ago. It was 2010 we did that. This was 2020. Um and I'm like, dude, you probably don't remember me or what, but I know so-and-so that you know, and, um, you know, thanks for writing this, right? So uh, he was kind of like, wow, that's fucked up, right? Excuse my language, but uh, what a small world, right? So um, so we make it on Barstool, right? And then, you know, in between these two videos, so 9-10 and 10-30, 2020 when this second gridiron gang video comes out you know what happens erica nardini who i was just telling you about who was ceo of barso at the time she gets nominated and put on the board of directors for wwe and i'm not gonna say i had anything to do with that right but i i found it super strange I'm like wow i just i just did this video and now erica's on the board of WWE, right? And we show that in the clip too. So, you know, it's just wild. I'm just sitting here and being like, how does, how does this happen, right? I'm sure it was in the works for weeks before the Gridiron Gang, months before the Gridiron Gang 1 came out, but still the timing of everything is just beautiful, right? So, so then what happens with me, right? So I'm off bar stool, you know, I'm working at a bank at a time and, uh, I, I get asked to, uh, come down to Miami. And uh, yeah, I, I'm young, I'm like 23 at the time. So I'm like, yeah, I could use a change of scenery. I got offered a pretty sweet job and I was working, can't make this up, right? I end up in Doral, Florida. And uh, you know, you hear President Trump talk about Doral all the time. He's got the Doral International, uh, Trump International Doral there, the beautiful golf course and property. Uh, you see him go down there all the time. You see him talking about it. And you see the clips, right? Doral, right down the street in Doral. Big stuff. Huge stuff, right? So uh, you have President Trump, Doral. And here I am in Doral. And where was I working? I didn't know this at the time. I, mean, I knew it at the time. I didn't know any significance at the time. But I'm on the corner of 17th and 107. Wow, what are the odds of that, right? I'm at... 17 and 107 in Doral. Uh, what's going on, right? So uh, so that's just like a little fun thing about me. I show you that little intersection in the video. And I show you all these tweets that I was putting out over the last year doing 4VKM. Highlighting Doral. Talking about how Doral really is a special place. And what is special about Doral, what's very interesting about Doral, is that it's very insulated. It's very protected. I lived in a neighborhood where the president of Honduras had a house, right? And there was always Secret Service out his house. And I'm like, how the hell does the president of another country live and have a residence in our country? I never understood that, but I guess his daughter went to school there. So that was like his Florida house, right? Um, uh, but they, it's a very well protected. You have uh, U.S. Southern Command is in Doral. 
You have Miami D Dade Police Headquarters is there. Their fire headquarters is there. Then they have the Doral Police, right? So it's a very insulated area. And then, you know, you have POTUS almost smack dab right in the middle of uh, downtown Doral in his, his property there. So uh, very interesting stuff. Doral, very special place in my heart. Welcome me to Florida. And, uh, you know, I, I was privileged to work at the corner of 17 and 107. For uh, many years, too. For four or five years, about. So, um, we move on from Doral. What else happened in Doral around uh, the same time, 2020? There was a convention. And uh, I think it was called AmpFest, right? And at this AmpFest event, it was promoted that RFK was going to be there. Our, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., right? And he's in this video again, too. Again, this is four years ago now. Uh, three years before he runs for president. And um, he backs out because, you know, a lot of the media was coming at him. Because they're like, oh, RFK is going to a QAnon event. You know, a bunch of anti-vaxxers are getting together and Doral, right? So RFK backed out of it. Uh, understandably so, right? But another falconer. Uh, shows up instead via satellite, and his name was Alan Perot. Are you guys familiar with Alan Perot? So Alan Perot uh, was a falconer, and he talks a lot about Benghazi, and he's talking to, uh, oh God, I can't remember the one guy's name. I'll put it in the comments, so sorry. But uh, I, I know the other uh, fellow, I don't know his name, but it was Tyrone Woods' dad, right? And Tyrone Woods' dad uh, or Tyrone Woods, uh, was one of the individuals that lost their life in Benghazi, right? So Alan Perot is talking about this, right? Um, Tyrone Woods, you know, they actually established a wrestling foundation because I guess he was a wrestler, uh, like a, a collegiate or high school, uh, and, and they had a foundation that supported, you know, young wrestlers or whatnot. So I thought that was an interesting uh, spin on things as well. But anyway, so you, you don't get RFK at um, the uh, Ampfest and Doral, but you get Alan Perot instead, right? And he uh, he was kind of dropping all that information on Benghazi. And, uh, you know, everybody kind of has their opinions on who that guy is. So uh, very interesting. Take a look at Mr. Alan Perot for sure. Now, uh, we talked about Alan Perot. What else? What else? Doral, Ampfest. Um, I think that is it. Tony Babalutsky. Remember this guy? Yes, this is an important guy, right? Probably said his name wrong there. But, um, you know, he does that Fox News interview. He had all the dirt on Joe Biden, right? Uh, he was one of the business associates there. And he was basically saying all the stuff that we now has been founded out, proved uh, over the last three years, the Biden family uh, corruption. And um, the interesting thing that he says is he talks about how he has a Q clearance, right? So everybody's like, is he Q? He says he has a Q clearance. That guy's got to be Q. And I don't think he's Q, right? Q, Q clearance is, a, is, is something that a lot of people have. It's the Department of Energy, right? But you want to know something interesting about that is look up kind of when the Department of Energy and what then would become Q clearance. How was that established? That was established in a little piece of legislation called the McMahon Act uh, in 1946, 45, 40, somewhere around that time frame, right around the time frame, Vincent Kennedy McMahon is born, right? So you have Vincent Kennedy McMahon being born, uh, and then you have the McMahon Act giving birth to Q clearance. I mean, it's crazy, right? So, uh, can you see why I might be losing my mind a little bit? You know, there's a lot of stuff that you just can't ignore, right? So, uh, anyway, that's it about Tony Babalewski, whatever his name is. But ultimately, what's The Rock decide, right? So remember, I told you The Rock chose the alliance. He chose Biden and Harris, right? Uh, but he was playing them. He psyched them out, right? And as Shane McMahon's running around the ring celebrating the fact that he got The Rock's endorsement, The Rock then 
takes that smile and he flips it and he grabs Shane and he gives Shane the rock bottom, right? And ultimately he goes back to the WWF. And remember what I told you in the last video, the rock was always a Republican, right? He was always a Republican, right? Until that endorsement, right? So will the rock go back to the WWF? Will he go back to Vince McMahon and that side of things? I don't know. Time will tell, right? Uh, or does he stay on the other side, right? And he's this big, you know, uh, Democrat uh, candidate, political candidate in the future. That's possible too, right? Um, who knows? But all I'm saying is that maybe that skit in wrestling all those years ago was a metaphor for what was going to happen with The Rock in the future. And we're just waiting for that second rock bottom to hit. So that's it on The Rock. Um, you know... That clip ends with Jim Ross saying, finally, The Rock has come home, right? So uh, he's very excited. Heyman, very upset. Um, but it's all good, right? So then we wrap things up. We get to my man Elias, right? Uh, and Elias, uh, biblical name, right? He actually uh, came back as his brother, Ezekiel, clean shaven, right? So you had Ezekiel, another bi biblical name. And now he's outside of WWE and he's wrestling as Elijah, another biblical name, right? So, you know, he loves those things, right? So his whole thing was he'd come out and he'd sing, right? And during the Thunderdome era, he put on a concert on Monday Night Raw. And I'm not going to lie, this concert was like nuts, right? He just dropped an album. What was the name of the album? The album was named Universal Truth. Oh, we're talking about the truth here, right? So I show you a couple different clips of teams that have to do with the truth, right? Uh, I told you the other day about R-Truth. Wow, they have a wrestler called R-Truth. <sighs> so he's in some tag teams, right? He's in a tag team with Goldust, right? They call that the Golden Truth. He's in a tag team with The Miz. They call that the Awesome Truth. And guess what? The Miz and R-Truth, after like 10 years, they just got back together. Awesome Truth is a thing again, right? So... Uh, what are the odds of that happening, right? But um, Elias is singing these songs, right? And he's talking about time and space and all these these crazy trippy things, right? And, you know, when he's saying stuff like that, I'm thinking about our boy Baron Trump. I'm thinking about his marvelous adventures in the Inger, Ingerwood Lock, Lock, Ingersoll Lockwood uh, books, right? Don't forget, you have that one, you, you know, book from late 1800s called the, uh, the Marvelous Adventures of Baron Trump, right? And it's about this guy, Baron Trump, and uh, or this kid, Baron Trump. And he, there's a character in the book called Don, right? And there's a goggle machine, or you know what some people would call a Google machine, and they go to Russia, and all this crazy stuff, right? So you have that. And then what's the other book? The Last President, right? And what's The Last President about? The Last President is about, uh, you know a guy from Fifth Avenue that wins wins the presidency and a bunch of people are rioting outside his hotels or his, his skyscrapers or whatnot, right? So it's like, what? That's weird, right? 1900, that book came out somewhere around that time. So uh, we show you a little bit. Again, how do they know stuff like this? How do they know about Kamala, right? How, how are they able to put stuff in WWE storylines before, before it happens, right? They do it in movies as well, right? Uh, uh, it's just, it's very interesting, right? So we know with Nikola Tesla, what happened there. We know that when Tesla passed away, his work got handed over to John G. Trump, right? And they said, hey, can you take a look at this for us? Make sure there's nothing crazy in here. He took a look at it and said, hey, guys, nothing to worry about. Nothing really crazy in here, right? Um... I'm sure there was some crazy stuff in there, right? And then when you look back to the future, you know, the first time I ever posted on social media about Donald Trump uh, when he was running for president, it was on Facebook, and it was a picture of Biff, right? And you have that account on Twitter. He's uh, he's ghosted me a couple times, but Biff Don, uh, shout out to you, because he's done, a, I think he's done a lot of good work. Now, doesn't think Trump's a good guy. That's okay. Not, you know, everybody's allowed to have their opinion. Hopefully Trump is a good guy. I think he is, right? Uh, but there's always that chance. Always that chance. But um, I'd say it's a very, very slim chance. I just don't like to say anything's 100%. 
Uh, so you have all of that, and uh, you have these weird connections with time travel. Is that how they're doing it, right? I don't really know. Nobody knows, right? But we show you the Tesla Towers, and that's going to come in handy in the next video that we're going to talk about tomorrow. And that video is going to be called Juan O'Saving the Republic, right? So this video uh, came out on 10-30-2020. It was the last video before the sham election. Um, so, you know, the next video is the first video after the sham election. And those Tesla Towers come back, right? So I show them in the video, and then they end up in WWE television in a very significant moment uh, at the Survivor Series. So, um, as always, make sure you go and watch this video back. Uh, Gridiron Gang 2 Saves America. Universal R-Truth is actually the full title of it. Uh, released on 10-30-2020. 10-30-20. Uh, or 1-3-2. There's that ACB again, right? So, uh, check it out. Make sure you subscribe to the 4VKM podcast channel. You know, I'm not sold on YouTube at this point. I'm, I watch my views and I'll see it, you know, at a number and then I'll see that number go down. So I might just do Rumble exclusive on the podcast. I haven't uh, made my mind up yet, but those Barstool guys kind of inspired me today when I saw them kind of move over there. They're doing both, right? But you know, YouTube, I don't know if they deserve it. So uh, keep subscribing just in case. I, I don't change my mind here, but um, I think it might be a rumble thing. So we'll find out. We're going to continue all these videos on YouTube till the end. Uh, yeah, They can do their best to hide them, but uh, I need your help in getting the word out. Share these videos along with the old ones so people know what the hell I'm talking about uh, as well. And uh, they can see the complete picture. So as always, enjoy the show. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to talk a little bit about Wano saving, and we're going to talk about some 1122 and some Undertaker with some stuff that I think is going to blow your mind. So have a great night and enjoy the show.